introduce Mr. Terry White. He's going to talk to you about his favorite four Nikkor lenses for travel and landscape. Terry White. Thank you, Mike. Good to see you. Hello, everybody, and welcome. I am thrilled to be here in front of you and in the Nikon Theater. It's my first time in the Nikon Theater, so I want to um, give a thanks and shout out for the folks that invited me here. I am, for the first time, a little apprehensive about doing a presentation because I'm usually on the other side of this when I'm doing presentations. I can talk about image editing all day long till the cows come home. But to actually get up and start talking about my photography, that's where it gets a little intimidating because while I feel like my photography is okay, I see people like Deb Sandage and, and people that were up here just a few minutes ago on the panel, and I look at their photography as, oh my God, that's amazing and inspiring. So I'm always looking at other people's work to get inspired, to, to do better. But today I'm going to actually talk a little bit about somewhere in my comfort zone, which is gear, talking about my favorite lenses. Now, I want you to know when it comes to lenses, you will always hear people talk about their favorites and why they're their favorites. But this is not the lens police. This is not locked in stone. This is not a law. This is not you have to use this lens for this purpose. As a matter of fact, I'm going to talk about some lenses that I've used in situations where they weren't supposed to be used. In other words, if you were to say 85 millimeter 1.4, you immediately probably think about portraits, and so do I. That doesn't mean that lens can't function for anything else. So we're going to talk about that. So let's get to it. Let's start with my favorite travel lenses. I do two types of photography primarily. I'll photograph anything, but the thing that I concentrate on is portraits. That's my, like, that's my happy, happy place. But since I get to travel for a living, I also talk about travel because I get to do it. I get to go to amazing places for my job. So let's start off with the question, if you were on a deserted island and you still had your camera, you could charge your battery and all that, and you could only take one lens, this would be it. I started out, um, I'll confess, I started out buying third-party lenses way back when because they were cheaper. I wasn't really that committed to my photography yet. And while those third-party lenses, I'm not going to mention any brands, but while they worked, they were just OK. Like, I could look at the images and I could see, well, this is not as sharp as I see other people's images. And there's a little bit of, of uh, distortion in the corner on this particular lens. And so one by one, I started swapping out my third-party lenses for Nikkor lenses. And I've never been happier. And what I always tell people is that camera bodies come and go. You will always be upgrading your camera bodies from here on out because the technology keeps changing. They keep getting better, smaller, lighter, better sensors. But when you buy good glass, that can last you for decades. That good glass will just keep going from body to body to body. All right, so let's take a look at some of my favorite shots with this particular lens. I took this lens to Egypt. I took two bodies. So I was, this was on one body. I think this was on the D's, D810, or maybe the D700. I can't remember which one it was. Or maybe my D4. Uh, but it was on one of those bodies, and I had a different lens on a different body. And I just love what I, the range of focus with this, or the range of um, depth that I can cover with this lens. 28 to 300 millimeters means that I'm not going to have to change this lens very often. It's nice and sharp, it's fairly lightweight, and you can keep this lens on and use it all day long. Next up, actually, let's keep going. This, uh, this is interesting. These particular shots were taken here, of course, but from a boat. I was actually on a moving boat while I was taking these shots. And if you've ever tried to take a shot from a moving boat and keep it sharp and keep it in focus and keep it basically looking good, you know that's a challenge. So again, another testament to the quality of that particular lens. This is a shot I took. Um, as a matter of fact, I grew up born and raised in Detroit, and I had never gone to Canada to shoot Detroit. I've always shot Detroit downtown from downtown. I've always photographed Canada from Canada, but never gone to the river on the other side. A lot of people don't even, you know, that aren't close to Detroit don't even know that Canada is literally, literally right across the river. And 
I just went over there just to photograph the skyline in Detroit. And again, that was the only lens I had with me on that particular trip. I love this particular shot because from an image editing standpoint, this is nine exposures. This is three sets of bracketed exposures combined as HDR and then merged into a pano. And again, to get this kind of clarity and this kind of sharpness from that lens, I just get thrilled every time I see an image from it because this lens just totally rocks, 28 to 300. Uh, I heard someone from the panel talk about the challenges of Iceland. I've seen those challenges in Iceland. This was a sunrise shoot. Um, again, this was with the D810, getting that, um, that shadow detail. If, if you were to zoom into this area, you would see every detail of, the, of that boulder. It's just amazing, and again, with that same lens. Uh, Seattle skyline. This was a shot that I thought was going to be like a money shot. I was going to use this shot and sell it on stock until I realized that because the main focus of the shot is the, is the space needle, they were like, nope, you got to get, get a property release for that particular shot. So it's in my portfolio. I love it. Great shot with the 28 to 300, but couldn't sell it the way I wanted to. So another one from Iceland. And again, look at the detail of the church. The 28 to 300 is just an amazing lens. Now, I don't work for Platypod. I don't get paid any money for Platypod, but it is one of my favorite accessories. If you want to get those low angle shots shooting up, and if you're getting to be my age and you don't want to get out on the ground all the time, just set the camera down, especially now with D850 and my remote or using my phone, I can get those great shots from below. So Platypod, they're over in the back of the expo hall. Go check them out. They got great accessories that will you, let you use your ball head, your camera, your lens, supporting all the weight on a nice flat tripod. All right, let's get into things that this lens is really not supposed to be used for, if you believe that. Portrait photography. I've used this lens time and time for portrait photography because I ran across a situation where there was a great portrait to be had, and it was the lens I had with me. It wasn't planned necessarily to be that case, but this is the way it worked out. So a friend of mine, we did a shoot in Red Rock, um, Red Rock Canyon in Vegas, and I had her get into some athletic gear, had my 28 to 300, and just captured some fun, amazing shots with that particular lens. This one was in studio. I could have switched to any one of my other lenses. But I saw the shot, I took it, and I couldn't have been happier with the results. So don't get locked into that. This lens can only be used for this thing. Don't photograph this other thing with it because that's really not the case. Now, I started with this one because when I first started out with uh, my photography, I, was, I didn't have full frame cameras. So I was shooting with DX uh, based sensors. So this used to be my workhorse. This used to be the lens I would travel with if I could only take one lens. So if you're still in a DX camera, I still say go for the 28 to 300, but if you want to save money, the 18 to 200 will do a good job. So here's a shot I took in Australia, uh, Hayman Island with that shot, just taking it from the balcony, and one of my favorite travel shots to this day, taken with that 18 to 200 lens. All right. Again, start it with the DX. Now, the 18 to 200 doesn't count as the favorite four. 28 to 300 is still the first one of the favorite four. This one doesn't count either, but a lot of you will start out with a kit lens. And people will tell you, oh, you know, you're on the kit lens. You know, you should upgrade. You should buy something better. Don't believe them. <laughs> yes, you should upgrade at some point, but don't think that you can't capture great images with a kit lens, because you can. It's really about the sensor and the lens combination. If you've got a great body, even with a kit lens, you can capture some amazing detail and some amazing photos. All right, next up. Now, this one is in, this is number two of the four favorites. This is definitely my workhorse, my 14 to 24 when I travel and I do landscapes. I am not a landscape photographer by any means. I hate getting up early. I am not a morning person. In order to get that amazing light, you've either got to get up early or you've got to be right there at sunset and get the amazing light at sunset. If you're not willing to get up early, 
chances are you're not going to be a great uh, landscape photographer because that's what it takes. So went on the trip and I said I could sleep anytime. This is the trip where I'm going to have to get up early or stay up late to get the or be at the right spot at the right time later to get those shots. Um, when you're traveling with someone, that helps because you're both encouraging each other to get up and get out. And that's exactly what I do with this particular lens. All right, so let's get to my favorite subject, my favorite thing to talk about, and that is portrait photography. This is my comfort zone. This is where I spend most of my time. And I'll tell you a little story about how I got into photography more seriously. I was always the kid with mom's camera, but how I actually started taking it serious was that my very first Lightroom presentation, Lightroom 1.0, over a decade ago. I was in a theater situation like this. I was doing a demo, I was showing Lightroom. There was a gentleman sitting in the front row and he asked me a question. He wasn't trying to be mean or anything, he, just, he was just curious. I was showing these amazing photos and he said, are those your photos? I was like, oh no, these are the photos that Adobe gave me to, to show Lightroom, to show it off. We hired a photographer to do this. These are you know, so-and-so's photos. And the look of disappointment on his face forever changed me. I said from that moment on, I am never going to show a demo where I'm not using my own photography because that lends credibility to my presentation. So that's when I started getting serious about my photography. That's when I got out and started shooting. So when it comes to portraits, if I was left on that island and I was only going to be shooting portraits from here on out, this is my favorite. I know a lot of you will say, oh, I love the 105. I love this. I love that. I love all of those too but this is my favorite. So this would be number three of the favorite photos, the 28 to 300. And I've had two versions of this lens. I had the first version, and I think I'm on the second version now. I think they're on the third or fourth generation of it. Um, and I'm thinking about getting the fourth one because it lets you get a little closer for focus. But anyway, this lens has always been my favorite because I love the compression that you get uh, on the background when you're using this lens. So this particular shoot, was years in the making. I had the idea in the back of my head. I remember being on a plane. You guys remember Sky Mall? Remember that? That was a catalog that sold all expensive things that you could find anywhere else much cheaper. Well, anyway, Sky, <laughs> Sky Mall was the catalog on a plane one day, and I was looking through it. Again, I already had this, this image in my head, and they had this chair. And I was like, wow, when I get ready to do this shoot, I'm going to go buy that chair from Sky Mall. I'm going to look everywhere else first, but I'm going to see if I can find it. Well, a year went by. I didn't do the shoot for a year. That chair went from $700 to $900. So when you have an idea, don't wait. Go do it. Go do your thing. Don't wait for the right moment, the right opportunity. So the chair cost me much more. But anyway, found a great model, found a great makeup artist, found great accessories to put this all together. Uh, I lit this with um, continuous lighting. And it was just a fun, great day. So it's one of my favorite shots in my portfolio. Um, I love expression. I love detail. I love just facial features. This is a young model. Her name's Amanda. Love photographing her when I used to live in Michigan because she would just always bring me those most innocent, sincere, great looks. And again, this was with 70 to 200. Uh, yes, I shoot guys too. <laughs> so I don't think it's just all women. Uh, definitely shoot guys. This was actually one of my best selling images and it was a fluke because this particular image was taken in studio as a favor to a model. She was like, hey, my friend needs some professional headshots. Would you bring him in and take some shots? He can't pay you, he doesn't have any money. And I'm like, oh, okay, another freebie, sure, I'll go do it. T uh, will he sign a model release? That was my, my criteria. Yes, he'll sign a model release. You can use the images any way you want. And then that became actually one of my best-selling images. Um, sometimes I do images that are just in the creative process. So this was one that the makeup artist actually had envisioned. And I was like, sounds cool to me. Gold flakes? Yeah, let's do it. And just shooting that with a 7200 was a blast. And it, what? let's go back one. Look at the depth of field in the background. Look at the compression. Look at the way this particular image out, comes out. Look at the sharpness. Uh, yes, I post-process all my images, but with this particular lens and a great body, 
There's not a lot of work to do from a sharpness standpoint. You will get great, great content. Of course, I work for Adobe, so I do lots of Photoshop work. These are not twins, it's the same guy. <laughs> he just wanted an image of him basically talking to himself, his, giving his younger self or his other self some advice. So taking that with the 7200 was a blast. Um, I do a lot of fashion work, or I used to do a lot of fashion work. Now it's more lifestyle, and I'm shooting more for um, ad campaigns and stock photography. That's where I'm finding most of my income from photography coming from these days. Uh, this was actually a senior shoot. This, this kid actually does football, basketball, baseball. Like He was that all-star student that could play all sports. So we, we brought him in studio. Uh, had him bring all his football gear, his basketball gear, and we had a great time, again, using that lens. Now, I got to admit, when I first brought this image up, I was like, oh, I'm going to move this over to another lens, because I thought I shot this with my 85 millimeter. I was stunned that I was getting that level of depth of field and compression with the 70 to 200. So I checked the metadata. I was like, son of a gun, this was a 70 to 200. So that's why it's in this category. And of course, uh, this is an actor. Uh, a friend of mine, his name is Tony. You will see him in that movie with Tom Cruise about America. Remember, the, he was the, 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 they were doing the drug thing. I forgot what the movie was called, but anyway, it's Tom Cruise, recent movie. He's one of the guys that comes to the plane and says, what are you guys doing with all this stuff? So, anyway, uh, great, great actor, great fun in studio with Tony. Sometimes I play with light play with gels. I play with all kinds of things in studio because photography is not my primary source of income. So I get to play. I get to do things that don't necessarily have to result in a paycheck or a job. Uh, again, love fashion, love beauty looks, love corporate headshots. This is the actual husband of the makeup artist that I uh, was using quite a bit. He wanted to come in and get some shots done. And again, if you look at the detail here, here, in his eyes, everything, great, great lens. Yes, this is a composite. I know I tried to make it look as real as I could, and if I fooled you, great. But this is actually a composite. She was in studio. The airplane is a stock shot. And again, same student from high school, um, graduation, portrait shoots, and again, playing with the lighting, trying to create those dramatic looks using that 70 to 200. All right. Yes, I use the 70 to 200 outside as well. I don't just use it in the studio. So this shot of the Atlanta skyline taken from the Jackson Street Bridge on a tripod, long exposure, having a blast, windy day, great, great lens to work with, even outside. This is another one that I happen to have the 70 to 200 with me. I shot this actually from the ledge of Coit Tower, shooting the city of San Francisco, famous church, St. Peter's, St. Paul and St. Peter's Church in San Francisco. And again, look at the church, but continue to go back and look at the detail that this lens can capture. All right. This is not one of my favorite four, but it absolutely could be. I'm not a fan of this focal range, the 24 to 70, the 28 to 70, which is actually what I really have. I have an old 28 to 70. And Nikon did a very bad thing to me, horrible thing, worst thing that they could ever do. They loaned me this lens. <laughs> this is the new one. This is the one with VR. My old one doesn't have VR. So they, uh, I borrowed, they loaned me this lens when I was doing my DA50 review. And I was like, oh, really? 24 seconds? Oh, I got to shoot some shots with it because they loaned it to me. OK, fine. Put the lens on. I'll never forget taking the first test shot, looking at the screen like, I was blown away. And I had never been blown away by this lens at all in its previous incarnation. But if I had to get a new lens right now, that would definitely be high on the list. It'd be in the top three because I just love what, this, what they've done with this particular lens. Again, not one of my favorite focal lens, but if you have a short shooting space, if you can't get back far enough for the 70 to 200, 
or if you're shooting outside, landscapes, this is a great lens to have. And with the new VR capabilities and nano coating and everything they've done to this lens, I am very impressed. So um, this isn't with that particular lens, but it is with my 28 to 70. So just that focal range, again, took it to Paris because I don't know, remember, I don't even remember why I took it there, but I had that lens. Uh, I know why, because I didn't have my 18 or 28 to 300 at the time. So um, love this shot. And again, look at the detail of the hair, the depth of field, great, great, great lens. Now this particular one, I used the 28 to 70 or 24 to 70 to get closer, but still have that wide ang angle to be able to still shoot this at 28 or 24. So fun times in the studio with the makeup artist and several of her sisters and friends. And here's another example. Remember when I said when you can't get back far enough? I now, since I moved to Atlanta, I now have a studio in my home. Studio's not very long. So if I'm trying to get that full length shot, I'll put this lens on because I can get back far enough to do it. Set, at 70, I can't get back far enough. I'm going to cut off something. But at 24, 28, I can get back far enough to do it. And again, I had the 14 to 24 and the 24 to 70 with me at this point. I was out doing some travel photography. This is actually looking up at the uh, Marriott Marquis in Atlanta. So it looks like a space station. It looks like, a, especially when you lay it down on its side. So these are actually elevators. So just had fun shooting this. All right. This is definitely my go-to lens, number four, when I want that awesome depth of feel and lifestyle look. The 85 millimeter 1.4 is not cheap. However, the, the 85 millimeter 1.8 is a lot cheaper. And it's not a huge difference. So if you're on a budget, if money's no object, get this. If you're on a budget, look at the 1.8. All right, and again, this is the kind of stuff I do with it, lifestyle shots to get that great depth of field and to throw the background completely out of focus, but still have a great sharp image in the foreground. It is a prime lens, so it's 85 millimeter. You, you're going to be the one that moves up forward and backwards to get the shots that you want. Now, remember when I said earlier on, don't get locked into, oh, this lens is only for this purpose? I took that lens with me on a trip to Detroit recently because I thought I was going to be doing a lot of portraits. I took that and the 28 to 300. Accidentally left the 28 to 300 in my hotel room. Got to the scene. Only lens I had with me was the 85. Why not? I'm not going to pack it up and miss sunset and go back to the hotel and get the right lens. I'm going to take the shot. And I took the shot, and it came out great. I loved it. All right, so what have we learned? Terry uses a lot of lenses for a lot of different things. Don't get locked in. Definitely my go-to, if this was the only lens I could ever take with me, my 28 to 300. If I'm going to shoot travel and landscapes, and I'm going to take more than one lens, I'm going to take these two. If I'm going to be in a studio, definitely going to use the, the, the um, 70 to 200. And if I want those great lifestyle shots with that shallow depth of field, I love my 85. So those are my four favorite lenses. Do I have more lenses that I like? Absolutely. Are there other lenses that you can use for these purposes? Absolutely. Can you use third-party lenses? If you want your image quality to suffer, yes, you can. But I say stick to the uh, Nikkor lenses for the best combination with your Nikon branded DSLRs and uh, full frames and DX lenses. All right, so with that said, I've had fun. I hope you've learned something at least about what I like to do. And I hope you got something out of this. And I hope you have a great rest of your Photo Plus Expo. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Terry White. Stick around. We got more incredible education and inspiration coming to the Nikon Theater in several minutes. Hang on. More education to come.